buying a used car is stressful and never more so than when it's a tow vehicle. So today I'm here to offer you lessons learned and advice that I've picked up along the way in having four trucks in 2020 to tow our travel trailer around the country. Welcome back to No Ordinary Path, everyone. My name is John. If you're new here, know that I am a travel nurse that goes around the country taking nursing contracts with my beautiful wife and three children. And we live in our RV that we call Wendy. She's a 37 foot travel trailer that I tow currently with a 2016 Dodge 2500. Ah, Ram, Ram, I mean Ram. If you're just now watching this and haven't watched last week's video, go back and watch that one. It's the episode where we talk about all the issues that we have had having gone through all these different trucks, especially the 64 Ford that I had before this. It's really the precursor to the visit this video. But this one, I wanted to bring you the tips and tricks that I have learned going through all these process of buying these vehicles. I have made mistakes. I can learn from them and hopefully you can learn from them too. Let's break it down like this. Research, inspection, and negotiation. All right, first things first, research. Do better research. Don't just, one mistake that I made is I went online and I Googled used, best used diesels. And I it came up with a list, right? You guys have probably done this. One that came up was the 2008 to 2010 Ford Super Duty truck, the 6.4 liter. Now. It said it's a great used diesel, a lot of stuff. Now I know there's a lot of people out there that are gonna go, no way, man, I know about that motor. And they're right, it's a craptastic motor. It's a cluster truck, you guys. Go watch the video, seriously. The thing that it says about it is that it's good if you tune it, if you delete it, if you do all these things to it to make it a little more custom and not standard stock. Once you do those things, it is a solid motor. I got trapped in it because I didn't read deep enough into it and I didn't do the other things on this list that I'm going to bring you. You want first-hand experience, not just Google. Okay, talk to people that have had these vehicles or that have gone through them already. Get on Facebook groups. Guys love to talk about their trucks, the good, the bad, and the ugly. You will learn a lot on there about what's good motors for towing what. If you've got somebody that you know that's a mechanic, definitely call them. If not, just call the different mechanic shops around and just ask them point blank. Hey man, I'm thinking about buying a new truck. Um, you got any tips of ones that I could stay away from or ones that I may should look for? What years, what models, that kind of stuff. Don't ask the salesperson, okay? Their, their job is to sell you a vehicle and they will tell you things to sell you a vehicle. Narrow down your search and be patient is number two. Kind of comes right off the cusp of number one. Just narrow it down. There's a lot of different kind of heavy duty diesels out there or even gas, These, this all applies. I'm gonna talk a lot about diesel because that's my experience with these trucks. But guys, I drove Wendy around with an F-150 for like a year beforehand. There's a video about that up here. You can check it out. It's got a lot of views and comments. <laughs> um, if you go to a lot and it doesn't have it, guys, don't get suckered in by the salesperson to say, hey, I know you were coming here looking for you know XYZ model, but I've got this really shiny other one over here that might look really nice and be really pretty on the inside, but may not have good bones underneath of it. So know what you want and be specific and be patient about it. Try not to let yourself get into a crunch where you have to buy something really quickly or before a deadline too. Stay away from used car lots. Go to a reputable new car dealership to look for your used vehicle because used car dealerships are notorious for doing things to try to sell you their vehicles. That's their jobs, again. But some of the things that they do can be shady. One example of that that we ran into with the 6.4 truck, and I can't accuse the dealership, I'm speculating here, but I have heard that one thing that happens is you can tune engines and they tuned, or again, speculation, the engine on the 6.4 was tuned at some point in time, probably to hide some of the issues that we're having with it. That tune ended up costing us a lot. Also known for not having the most reputable warranties that you get too. Um, more to come on that.
Moving from the research, you figure out what truck you want, let's go and take a look at them. Let's find them, let's go take a look at them. So moving on to the inspection stage. All these tips in this section are brought to you from Jeremy from J&K Full-Time Adventures. He's also a certified diesel mechanic. And so some of the stuff that I learned from him and the tips that he talked to me and my wife about this whole process really did help us in the end, make us feel better about the vehicle. Thank you, Jeremy, for you know providing that uh, relief. You've got a truck that you want to look at and you plan to tow with it. Here's some things specifically to look for. Look at the hitch. What class is the hitch? If you already have a tow vehicle like we did and you have um, you know uh, a hitch like an equalizer or weight distribution hitch or something like that that's gonna plug into the receiver, is it gonna fit? Do you need a sleeve? Will it work for you? Is it rusted around the outside of it? Is there scars? Is the place where the tow cables hook into it, you know, the chains hook onto it, are they rusty? Has this thing been towed with a lot? It's going to tell you maybe it's been overworked, but if it looks pretty good and pretty clean on the outside, maybe it hasn't been towed with hardly at all and it's just some nice truck somebody had. So that'll be one indicator you can look for. Look at the pin. Look at where the, the trailer plugs into it for the lights, you know, whether it's a four pin or whether it's a big seven pin for a larger trailer. It, are the is the pin intact are there any rusted pieces in there anything that's broken off if it looks okay but you're not sure have the dealership check it they have things that they can plug into these to make sure that all the lights and everything will work guys that's your brakes for your trailer super important make sure that is work don't overlook it if you're planning on towing get up and look underneath of it. If there's rust on the frame, like I said, that's okay. But if the steering leakage looks rusty, that you can have them break it all loose and then retorque it just to make sure. Drive it around. Does it wobble when you get it up to like, you know, 65 or maybe even a little higher? Take it up to 80 guys on the highway. See what it feels like, just in case you need to get around a semi really fast or something like that. You wanna have a reliable vehicle. Have a scanner plugged into it to check the code. See if there's any recall codes that need to be done. Look, Have the dealership look it up online. And if they tell you that they can't do that one thing that was suggested is that you can actually take it like we have a, a Dodge vehicle that we're buying from a Ford dealership you can run it over on a test drive to the Dodge dealership have them plug their scanner into it and see if there's any codes or recall things that need to be done to it before you purchase this the if there are recall issues the dealership has to fix those before they're allowed to sell it to you so know that it may cost you a little bit of money it kind of can range between 50 to 150 dollars to have um, a dealership you know, plug a used vehicle in to scan it, but they're more than happy to do that even though they're not selling you that specific vehicle. Also ask the dealership that you're buying at to see if they'll plug it in. And that's what happened to us. They did that for us um, and there was nothing that popped up. The best thing that you could do is to have a mechanic buddy come with you. Um, if you've got someone in the family, if you've got a friend or somebody that knows these type of engines, stuff like that to come, and, and if you're fortunate enough to have that, definitely have them come with you because they can walk you through and know what to look for. While you're inspecting the vehicle, open up everything on the inside of it as well. Uh, you know, open all the boxes. Is there anything else in there? The truck that we bought had several things. It had a very cool custom hard sunshade that matched all the leather interior and all that kind of stuff. When they took it to detail and they brought it back to us, all that stuff was missing. Now we were in such a hurry to get out of there that I didn't really think about asking for it. I have requested it later, but I don't know if I'm going to find it or not. It may be gone. But look, look at everything and keep track of what all's in there that you know you could, that's yours, that would go with the truck. All right, well now here we are in the new truck. Carfax is often brought up in the negotiation for a used or even, well, for definitely a used vehicle. Um, don't let it become a negotiation point. The Carfaxes are great, but they are also on average can run anywhere between three to nine months behind on what actually happened to a vehicle. So if this truck was in a wreck, you know, like, I don't know, three weeks ago that they got fixed real fast and then traded it in, it might not show up on the Carfax. Then goes with certain like maintenance records and things like that. You know, a lot of things are on there, but a lot of things aren't. My point is this, don't let it become a negotiation factor for you. Probably the most important of all of this to know the vehicle and what it's worth. You know, what are the features that the vehicle has? What is the current market value for it from a dealership. You can look things up on like autotrader.com or kellybluebook.com to see the values of things. But also I like autotrader a little more because you can really tweak the different 
packages and stuff like this. Like the Laramie Long, the Laramie Longhorn here, this Ram is one of the higher end um, stuff. So it's got all these extra features like leather on the dash and the sunroof and all, all this, all this extra stuff. Plus it's got a tonneau cover and a bed liner and even things that aren't standard with it too. So you can plug all those things in to find other vehicles that match that are very similar to it that will give you an idea of price. This vehicle has an anti-theft system built into it. Well, when I see the dealer's sheet of this is what we are going to ask for the vehicle because these are the things that we put into it aside from the cost. There is a $299 anti-theft that they install in all their vehicles. It already has an anti-theft in it. What what are you going to install in it? And he gave me some, it's a window etching thing. I'm like, for, for $300? It already has an anti-theft device. There's stuff like that, guys. Know the vehicle. You can nitpick little things. Look for discounts. You can also ask and look for other things, too, that other dealerships are doing and seeing. You may not have the vehicle that you want at that dealership, but you can say, hey, you know, whatever down the road over here, Bob's used cars are offering this. Can you can you match that? Hey, I'm an EMS, firefighter, police officer, you know, first responder, nurse, whatever. Can you give me a discount? Yes, they oftentimes can. And sometimes nice people will put that on there automatically, but a lot of times they won't. You need to ask for it. If you're trading in a vehicle, let them make the first offer on the trade and then go from there. Don't say, okay, well, I want this because maybe you'll be really surprised at what they bring back. That was something my father-in-law was there to help me with, Charlie was, and I had an idea in my mind what the truck was going to be worth that we were going to be trading in, and sure enough, they came back at a little bit higher than that. So I'm glad I didn't ask for something first because I'm sure they would have been like, yeah, absolutely, we'll give you that for the truck. <laughs> ask for extras on top of things. Not always monetary value, but extras. This vehicle had one key that it came with. Can you guys give me another key? You know, can you can you pay for a key fob? Can, you know, can, why, why can't you do that? You know, I mean, like you could, I could come to your dealership and buy one. I should have two keys with a vehicle. Sure, yeah, we'll get you, we'll get you that. Okay, great. You know, I noticed that it's only got a quarter tank of gas in it. You fill it up with gas for me too? Yeah, yeah, we'll do. We'll take care of that. Okay. Well, great. What about the oil? You know, diesel oil changes are not cheap, you guys. I mean, I'm buying this vehicle from you. Can you fill it? Can you can you do the oil change for me at least for once? How or better yet, how about if I bring it back to this, you know, dealership, guys, can we do like four or five oil changes, you know, or or maybe for a year? How about maintenance free labor for a year? You can ask for stuff like this. Last tip but it's also the last thing that you get to deal with at the dealership when buying a, a used car. The warranty talk. It's okay to try to negotiate the price down for the warranty too. And this was another thing that I attribute to my father-in-law because he was basically like, bring it to this for these kids and we'll get out of here. In the long run, it saved us about 800 bucks. I wanted to address warranties a little more since our last video has garnered lots of comments about them. Here's our thoughts. Not all of them are bad. In fact, we had a great one in the past. When we had the F-150, we bought it from the dealership where we bought the F-150, which was a legitimate one. Our income as a travel nurse is volatile. It changes. We can't afford it now, but we may not be able to in the future when and if problems do arise. Many people said instead of buying it, you should put it away in a savings account. The expenses would have still cost total more than the warranty costs. Buying a used vehicle from a reputable dealer, like a new car dealership, say Ford or Toyota, like I mentioned, is good. The warranties are often underwritten by the manufacturer anyway, so even if it's a used vehicle, it might still be a Ford warranty or a Ram warranty or whatever type of warranty it is. Even if it's not, it's backed up by a very reputable dealer, more so than these lo used, loosed, that's what I should call it, more so than these used car lots. This is the front seat, where all seats go in the front seat. Yes. Nice steering wheel. Nice steering wheel. No handprints. No handprints, right. So what do you look for? Dust inside this. But not dust, but rust. 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 You can also check the pin. I'm going to show you the top of this entire truck. What's that called? Truck. Well, it's a truck, but what is it that you're sitting on? It's called a tonneau cover. This is the back new tonneau cover. <laughs> this is the back flip tonneau cover. 
We cannot stand in the middle because it might bit down. I learned from this kind of process and I'm glad Charlie was there. I'm glad I had people like Jeremy that offered me tips. Some of you online offered me tips on the NO peeps and just other people on Facebook that we knew. I, thank you so much. You've all been a little part of this and it's, it's, I'm glad it's, it's over. <laughs> But I hope that if you're out there in the market and looking for things, that you found some of this stuff informative as well. And that's always the goal with our Real Talk Tuesdays is to just provide you with stuff that you find valuable. So thank you guys for being here with us. I'm sure we will see you out there on the road. Hit the thumbs up for the video. Subscribe if you're new. And uh, guys, all the best. Good luck. And we will see you out there. This is the inside of this truck. That's right, it's nice because it's all leather and it's already been christened by the children from sandy swimsuits and sandals and sand on the seats. Dad! It's okay.